It was a dream that had been held for centuries, a canal cutting across the Florida Peninsula that would link the Atlantic Ocean with the Gulf of Mexico. The $300 million, 200-mile-long cross-Florida barge canal would dwarf the Panama and Suez canals. It would begin in Jacksonville and travel down the St. Johns River, connect to the Oklawaha River, and then cut west below Ocala until it entered the Gulf of Mexico. But only seven years after construction began, President Richard Nixon announced that he was stopping all work on the canal to prevent further environmental damage to the Oklawaha River. The remnants of the canal remained the largest public works project in American history to be halted in the midst of construction. With its demise, the question then became, what should be done with the remnants of the Cross Florida Canal, especially the Kirkpatrick Dam and the Rodman Reservoir created behind it? On one end of the debate are environmental groups like the Putnam County Environmental Council, headed by Karen Allers, who want to tear down the dam and restore the Oklawaha to its natural state. On the other are sportsmen and concerned residents organized into groups like Save Rodman Reservoir, represented here by Putnam County Commissioner Ed Taylor. They see the dam and Rodman Reservoir as a community landmark, a fisherman's paradise, and a natural tourist attraction. The first letter I ever wrote to a politician expressing my concern over anything um, was the magnitude of the destruction I saw the floodplain of the Oklahoma River. What drives the difference between the environmental groups and, and the fishing groups, uh, I, I've never been able to truly understand. We at Rodman Reservoir, we're environmentalists also, but we're not extremists. Well, obviously, if uh, Rodman Dam was removed, or Kirkpatrick Dam as it's now known, um, you'd go from an impounded reservoir system back to more of a altered riverine system. There's a plethora of arguments for and against the reservoir, and there has been ever since 1971 when it first went to court. The history of the Cross Florida Barge Canal is the history of modern Florida in many ways because it, it relates to issues of growth and progress and the relationship of that growth and that progress to um, saving the environment, the environment that makes Florida kind of the paradise that people came here to see and want to see when they come down here. Proponents of Rodman would have you believe that there is um, uh, a huge economic benefit to keeping this dam in place and keeping this big pool of water here. And we believe it's just the opposite. As Florida uh, realizes and recognizes more and more the value of nature-based tourism, um, as gas gets more and more expensive and we try harder and harder to find alternative, uh, alternative uh, fuels, motorboats and things like that aren't necessarily uh, the wave of the future. The importance of the economy situation with, uh, uh, with Rodman Reservoir being there, I'm going to say people have said now it's around $10 million a year. The economic cost of removing the dam and having the river run freely and by that, the reservoir would be removed as an ecosystem, um, again, are, are questionable. The debate on the barge canal at the time was, uh, I would say, highly polarized, and most of the people on the, um, on the stop the barge canal side were younger, tended to be more academic, and the people on the build the barge canal side tend to be uh, people who were who were older and had been uh, have more experience, and people that were looking for the uh, economic benefit of having a barge canal through the middle of the state. What makes fishing so good at Rodman Reservoir is the structure that's there. You see, you see the hydrilla, uh, you see the standing trees. Well. All those trees that you see standing, there's 10 times that many that's underneath the water. When they, when they built the barge canal, uh, they had this huge machine that they just pushed those trees over, laid them down, and then when they flooded the reservoir, 
it left all of this structure that is fish spawning grounds. Fish love that kind of cover. It looked like a tree graveyard. Um, all of these uh, uh, dead tree trunks just standing up above the water. And what's happened now, uh, those are the stump fields now because those trees eventually rotted off at the water line, fell into the water, created more underwater hazard. Those stumps are a tremendous underwater hazard. People who don't know, um, who don't know what is there. Well, that's why this, this project has been so exciting and interesting to deal with. It's not just about a canal built in the 60s that was stopped and now they're trying to deal with uh, closing the dam, closing the lock. It's about America and it's changing from this rural society into this industrial society and now into this post-industrial society. Um, the river, the Oklahoma River, which is in front of us, was the center of Florida tourism in the late 19th century. Uh, in the 1930s, when Florida, just like the rest of the nation, is suffering through the Great Depression, the canal was started as a work project designed to put unemployed men to work building the canal. In the 60s, this is the great Florida example of, of you know, contemporary liberalism. Large work projects designed to reshape the environment and make Florida kind of a, the center of trade and commerce for the United States. And um, certainly when the canal is, is stopped in the 1970s, Florida and the canal become the flashpoint for this new environmental movement that uh, kind of takes America by storm in this last quarter of the 20th century. And today, the canal represents the kind of, of um, stasis between differing groups, people who want to see the canal completely put aside the dam breached, the river, the Oahu River restored, and those people who see the vestiges of the canal, mainly the Kirkpatrick Dam and the Robin Reservoir, want to keep that as an ecosystem that they say has been functioning for 40 years.